blood decay is getting more amazing changes it's going into the bucket of classes that are being improved on and it's looking so much better if you haven't looked at the last video that we did on blood decay well i'm just gonna save you some trouble unless you want to check the video that will help us out and grow the channel a lot of the issues that I personally thought the Blood Decay would have are addressed and are doing way better. There's still a few kinks to work around and that's what we're going to be talking about today. How the Blood Decay is shaping up to be a much, much better and amazing tank in Dragonflight. And if you like the content that we do and you want to see us live where we record most of the footage that goes into most of the videos and have a direct chat with us, check the twitch.tv slash Online stream channel on twitch that we have and you can go there leave a follow if you like and you can actually discuss with us live different wild topics that you enjoy plus you'll obviously be supporting us if you go there and you like our stream and you watch our stream and who knows maybe we'll have some fun and play some dungeons and raids with you dear viewers if you are on eu but either way we can still have a chill time and chat about wow don't forget twitch.tv slash marcelian online we stream about four to five days a week for quite a bit of time and uh we can have some good old times in world of warcraft and with that out of the way let's talk about the blood decay and the recent changes that have kind of turned the spec around because prior to these changes it was a little bit eh, it was a little bit eh, which is kind of how most specs are with their first iteration on dragonflight and this actually changes the 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 formula quite a bit first of all there's been quite a few changes in the general De death knight talent tree and if you have seen the previous one you'll notice that there's fewer capstones now and it's maybe more accessible to get to each individual one as the tree kind of narrows down as you get closer to the bottom which in a sense it's good because it makes the capsules more accessible but there's still some issue that i personally have with the blood decay uh, with the blood decay with the general de decay talent tree which obviously will impact blood decay regardless and this, these issues have been fixed for other classes so i know that this can be solved and that is that there's too many nodes of pure damage pure throughput which is something that we've been discussing for a while on a lot of classes and if if this is in the spec tree that's fine but when it's in the class tree it feels like you're you're definitely gonna get it because class trees are supposed to give you the, the utility the defensives the what makes people get you into groups right because you know they're not gonna mostly most of the time take tanks because of the damage although that helps but more so they're gonna be taken th for what they actually bring and damage is actually important whether you like it or not even if you're not playing a dps damage is important in the way that the encounter is designed especially if you want to perform and be a positive addition to your group so there's 18 nodes of pure throughput if my counting skills are correct and there's that this is just way too many that leaves you very few options to actually get tankiness absorbs defensives damage reductions avoidance leeches and all of that stuff it's okay so first of all before we go through you'll want a couple first as you put your first points in improved death strike is one of the biggest thing and it's thankfully just one point now and you will also want cleaving strikes especially if you play mythic plus maybe not as much if you go into raids um, I mean, it, I guess it depends on the kind of fight that the raids will bring. And if you don't do raids, then you can probably avoid this. But then again, you know, the the raise that which is just before it is still a kind of a throughput DPS node, right? So you would be sacking that as well. Not to mention anticipation, which is all the way on the left hand side, which is obviously going from mind freeze, which you will want because kicks and getting runic power from it is also something that you need to talent into separately from the kick meaning that runic power can be translated into damage and mitigation and everything else that the blood decay has and if you keep going down on the left hand side with uh you'll get icebound fortitude and some stuff like that and a bunch of other stuff on the way you will definitely want to get to runic attenuation first which is a major part of a lot of the runic power that blood decay can generate which if you take away the concept of the bloody kid that's currently now live on Shadowlands where it doesn't care that much about runic power because that that place that was going away you will want more runic power and this will become very very good and because of it you will have let's say on the ways other side of the talent tree you'll have unholy bond which is also very good because unholy bond increases the effectiveness of your runeforged weapon by 10 and then 20 percent 
which I mean, we all know how good the rune forges are for DKs, which, you know, they've been replacing in, in enchantments, enchants for weapons for a gazillion years. And you'll also have rune mastery, which is on the middle side of the talent tree that of, of course unlocks ab abomination limb, which is again something that you will want. And then you'll have Icy Talents, also something that deals a lot more damage. And of course, Icy Talents works really well with Runic Continuation, so you'll kind of want both. You'll also go through Blood Draw and so on, but you will end up on Empower Rune Weapon, which is arguably the strongest capstone, that and Abomination Limb as well. And these are only like, let's say, the mandatory one. You can kind of get all of these, although Unholy Bonds, uh, I personally put one point in since the capstone that it unlocks is not that strong. However, the, the strength of Unholy Bond is debatable because it kind of needs to be sinned. But 20% the better Rune of the Fallen Crusader is good because that gives you strength. So strength is amazing for a strength tank. There are also defensive ones, talked about the improved uh, Death Strike, not to mention Will of the Necropolis, which has been the core mechanic of what kept Blood Decay alive through one-shot mechanics or through tank busters. It's what makes it so it can convert efficiently runic power into healing because you will take a lot of damage very quickly and instead of actually dying, once you get low HP, you get to, you know, survive a little bit more because once you're taking down below 30% of uh, health, the damage that you take is reduced by 35%. And the way the kind of game sees that is that the damage that uh, supersedes the, the 35% is basically kind of absorbed, right? So it functions really well with getting you back up with Death Strike because you do have time to officially transform that damage into healing. So this has been like a core mechanic. This obviously depends on how hard the content will hit because you might be able to sacrifice this for some more DPS. However, if you do sacrifice this, you'll of course be uh, sacrificing Unholy Bond as well. So if Unholy Bond is not that good, maybe there's a world where you can sacrifice Wool of the Necropolis. Also, another, like a couple of other very important throughput nodes are also, uh, not throughput, but defensives, Anti-Magic Shell and Anti-Magic Zone, which have been core as to why you would want the Blood Decay as opposed to, let's say, another tank because of how much magic protection they bring aside of everything else that they do, which uh, they come, of course, with their own improvements, which are actually very good in terms of defensives. Not to mention there are other, so many more defensive talents, HP increases, secondary or tertiary stats increases, uh, better improvements on the cooldowns, Icebound Fortitude and stuff like that, that we're not essentially taking because we don't have that many points. Not to mention stuff like stuns and absorbs and slows and things like that and grips, more grips. There's just way too much throughput that we have to choose between uh, to getting essentially more, um, more utility, which maybe is not that bad for Blood Decay for a tank, in a world where Blood Decay would deal enough damage to keep aggro, which hasn't been the world in the last couple of expansions, unless you get a crazy tier set that we have right now in uh, Season 3 and Season 4. So outside of those worlds, Blood Decay kind of always wanted as much damage as possible, considering how much damage certain specs do. And if we transfer this into the realms of Unholy and Frost Decay, then they're even more screwed because they will have to take all of these throughput nodes. It's better than the last talent tree, but still would require a lot of improvements and we can probably take a page out of the Priest's book where um, Priest recently had a lot of changes. We also made a Shadow Priest video that you can check if you're interested in that. The general talent tree has gone through from like, I don't know, 14 whatever mandatory throughput nodes, it's just a, a, you know, ballpark number nodes to like about three or four nodes that are pure damage and rest is utility. And that works for Priest into making it more, f <clears throat> more free and versatile in terms of utility and what it can help with a group that worked for shaman as well that worked for all of the classes that have a reduced amount of nodes of pure damage in the general class tree so can only hope that blood decay and of course dk as a whole will get this treatment as well and with that being said also i did mention that soul reaper and unholy bond on holy ground is not particularly great they are throughput and you cannot even get all the throughput nodes even with all of these so far so you'll have to sacrifice things so even if let's say you would want to build throughout a full throughput spec you still cannot get all of them so that just feels bad very bad in the actual blood decay tree a more positive note is god damn it the tree is so much better it is way better than before i would probably call it near perfect but i'm sure there's there's a lot of issues and obviously this is my opinion by the way i know that 
um, there's different ways that things can uh, can be synergized with and how things work because Blood Decay, especially when you build it with this kind of a talent tree, is not particularly straightforward and there are a lot of mechanics that go into keeping you tankier and dealing more damage and there's actually split through a lot of nodes which first of all on, on the first look it just makes things more interesting because you can just build a more interesting tank. What is actually the best will remain to be seen once we have access to high-end content to see how damage profiles are and what tools we could actually use but it's good to know that we have options. First of all, the biggest thing that I enjoy about this spec is that we don't have the degenerate dancing rune weapon playstyle anymore that has come from the tier set and was present in the last build because right now dancing rune weapon is just, you know, dancing rune weapon. Uh, you just summon your rune weapon for 8 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown and it duplicates, uh, it mirrors your melee attacks and you get 40% parry chance. We still have, which is actually good, the insatiable blade talent which makes dancing rune weapon generate five bone shields charges and when it charges consumed you reduce the cooldown of dancing uh, rune weapon by five seconds which is actually really good as the current legendary that we have it's making uh dancing weapon an actual cooldown it's kind of hard to play dancing weapon without this because this is just way too good and you're probably always going to take it Outside of that, you will definitely uh, get Everlasting Bond, which is maybe the bigger change of the of the talent. You summon one additional copy of Dancing Weapon, and instead of having the Dancing Weapon window extended by pressing Death Strike and Heart Strike, which was before, it just has its base duration increased by 8 seconds, which is actually really good, because this will take Dancing Weapon to a 16 second 40% parry chance that duplicates your melee attacks which is really, really, really good. It's a very strong cooldown. It feels like at least in AOE where melee is concerned, you'll have it for, I mean, if you need it for more than 16 seconds, then you're no, no longer a tank. No tank that I know of so far has a defensive that can last for 16 seconds, unless uh, we can talk about prop Elden and Arden Defender, but that's a whole other story. There are, uh, there's also one other amazing change for pretty much all of the Blood Decays out there is that Gorfin's Grasp is in the middle talent tree and is very accessible as opposed to how it was prior to this all the way to the right, I believe, and close to being a capstone, which was really weird because Gorfin's Grasp like the Anti-Magic Shell and Anti-Magic Zone is a core mechanic that you would take a Blood Decay for and not any other tank. You'd hardly ever want a Blood Decay more than any other tank if that Blood Decay could not bring Gorfin's Grasp, meaning that the way it was before, you would kind of always want it in a raid if you wanted to, you know, bring the class, bring, bring the spec, and it would force you into a way to the side of the town tree. This is more central, more accessible, if you need it, you can get it, and you'll probably need it a lot, and you can get it very easily no matter how you path, either to the left or to the right. Speaking of, the left-hand side seems a lot more AoE-focused, although not exclusively. Um, it's looking really good, and one good marker of a good change is the choice node Tombstone uh, and Mark of Blood. I don't know what the fuck Mark of Blood is still doing in the talent tree, because nobody has been using it for years, but Tombstone at least the devs have figured out that it kind of only really works with Insatiable Blade uh, to reduce the cooldown to, or to accelerate rather, the cooldown of Dancing Rune Weapon and to kind of fluctuate the economy of Bone Shields uh, generated and consumed effic efficiently. Um, so that is really good. And because it's in the AoE side, which uh, makes it even better because uh, the realistically Insatiable Blade will have more value in AoE since more things attack at the same time, consuming more Bone Shields, uh, speeding up, that uh, cooldown reduction for Dancing Rune Weapon. Once again, Tombstone accelerating that playstyle and giving you more value out of this. Being on the AoE side is very good. Very, very well thought out. And another thing, Shattering Bone is still there. It's a two point uh, node that goes into Bone Storm. Shattering Bone is still looking to be really good, really good AoE damage. We'll see exactly how it sims once we have, you know, some, some proper end game content, because right now, like, you can see the dungeons that, that I've been doing on the stream. It's like, things just die really quick. Things just die really quick, and it is what it is. Bone Storm could be a questionable choice. It's good, it's nice in AoE, but we actually do have more damage, and especially more AoE damage options now, which we can talk about if we go to the right-hand side of the talent tree, which is the Blood Plague, Blood Shield, Physical Damage, Focus uh, Nose. There's a bunch of stuff here that you will recognize from the current talent tree, from the old school Blood Decay and other options that we had. First of all, another really good change is that Blood Boil is now only one talent and it has all both the charges. It's basically the full ability that's not split into many ones, which is good because it was weird 
it was and people could actually skip it and i mean you could skip it but you probably don't want to because it's a cheap non rune consuming uh talent or ability in this case that really gives you aoe aggro which is something that bloody k really needs and you don't want to spend runes for it consumption is still what the fuck needs a lot of buffs like i don't know what is doing, it's still not doing anything. The scaling of it, it will make it irrelevant. If they will buff its damage, it will probably become kind of mandatory. So I don't know how they're gonna balance this. It's one of my favorite Blood Decay skills, but uh, going back into, into Legion, and I was talking to Mandel about this as well. One of the main reasons why consumption was so good and probably a lot of people wanted back, myself included, was because of all the party-wide leech that it would do. And since it's not doing that, and if it did that again, then Blood Decay would be overbearingly degenerate, overpowered again. Maybe they can do something else. Maybe buff its damage. Maybe have its damage based on how many targets it hits. Maybe have it influenced by the Blood, blood Plague, which it kind of can do, but I don't know if it's enough. Rapid decomposition is still there. <sighs> well, I guess we still have it, but it can be a much better talent if you do take Coagulopathy, which you might, which uh, I think this is this wasn't in the previous build. Enemies affected by Blood Plague take 5% increased damage from you and Death Strike increases the damage of your Blood Plague by 25% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So that's really cool, um, especially in... Um, I don't know if this, because well, I, I couldn't really test it fully or how it is intended to do, but if this is only single target, if Death Striking only makes that that particular target take more damage from uh, from Blood Plague, then this is pure single target, pure raid damage. Um, it doesn't really transfer into AoE that much, so we'll see exactly how this is tuned out. Uh, however, you will probably want to go this path because um, you will be forced into rapid decomposition because your alternative is obviously consumption which you're probably not gonna take or blood drinker which is very very single target focused um only really raid and you will definitely want blood worms let's say you do go go you do go blood drinker because you're going single target but you'll probably still want blood worms and that's you know under rapid decomposition so it doesn't feel like it's a it's a decent trade-off although you could go i mean you still have races down there so who knows but coagulopathy might also really make umbilicus eternus which is the bottom right hand side capstone actually viable and good again it comes down to how the numbers transfer into into content and we're still leveling through beta right now we'll see how that plays out later on since we only had time to do a couple of leveling dungeons there's nothing really relevant there until we can actually test end game content sanguine ground is kind of newish kind of very prot paladin consecration wannabe style which i'm not a fan of it sucks on prot paladin it won't be better on blood decay which we could argue which one is uh, more stationary. I guess Bloody K is more stationary. It can bring shit to you. Maybe it's better as a concept on Bloody K. However, it's Death and Decay. At least Propaldin can keep up Consecration up 100% of the time. Blood uh, Death and Decay cannot be. So it's its effect is strong. It's I mean, it's decent. It's 5% more damage that you do and 5% less damage that you take. It's nice, but it's tied to an RNG if you consider, you know, uh, Crimson uh, Crimson Scourge procs. So we'll see how that turns out. It's and it's a tr and it's a central node. You cannot really uh, avoid it if you want to go down to Umbilicus Eternal and Red Thirst. However, there is a, a new playstyle that seems to have come across now with Iron Heart and Bloodshot, which actually I've been playing and it feels pretty nice because. They are, of course, function with blood shield. So first of all, Iron Heart makes blood shield's duration increase by two seconds, and it absorbs 20% more damage. Um, on paper, this should work with Gloom Ward, which is a talent in the general talent tree that increases absorbs on you. I'm, I'm not sure if they, they, they're coded to work in tangent. That would be really cool if they did. Um, however, in the dungeons that I was able to do, which are pretty low tuned for our characters right now, I had blood shield active on me for quite a bit. And I had on my 33k HP DK, I think it was, had about a 11k uh, blood shield for that absorbs physical damage, which is actually quite a bit. Well, we'll see exactly how that turns out. But that's also really good with bloodshot that makes uh, you deal 25% increased physical damage while blood shield is active. Obviously, this has AoE implications with cleaving heart strike, but I can really think about this in single target as well, where you hit those death strikes since. Single target boss damage, Blood Decay has suffered there as well. It might have been a little bit better in AoE, but in single target it really suffered. And uh, outside of the tier set that we have right now, I'm not sure how Blood Decay would be able to hold aggro against something like, I don't know, a prop warrior, maybe a prop paladin, right? 
uh, if we're talking about, you know, main tank and co-tank. Um, with the, this is kind of like the quick round out of the new changes. Obviously, there's a bunch more talents here that you can uh, use to combine into a lot of cool builds. There's a lot of bone shield interactions, a lot of HP interactions, which are actually really cool. The talent spread out seems better. There's a lot. There are a lot more paths. We could always do with more paths between talents, but hey, it's still better than last time. I think it can still be improved here and there. Uh, some buffs, some tunings, and a lot of the choices feel like they're going to be really reliant on the output and on the, on the sheer numbers that they output. So I hope that the tuning uh, takes that into consideration and we're not stuck once again with a cookie cutter build. Um, I love the Gore Fiend Grasp and Dancing Moon Weapon changes. They're really good. They take away a lot of the annoyance and frustration that you would have building a Blood Decay and still hoping for <laughs> consumption buffs sometime in the future. But at least we have Bloodshed, which looks really cool. And if Umbilicus Eternal can be can be tuned in, you might have some interesting Vampiric Blood playstyles. But that's it. What do you guys think? Do you think Blood Decay has a chance to become an amazing standalone tank that doesn't require any super external powers to be degenerate? I sure hope so, because this looks way more fun than what we have right now in Shadowlands. So I'll keep my eye on Blood Decay. And again, you should keep your eyes on our twitch.tv slash Marcellian Online so you can catch us stream and play Blood Decay, among other specs as well, either on live or on beta or both. Thank you, dear Patreon, for supporting the content, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.